The South China Sea issue is not really just a conflict over resources. It's actually conflict over identity. Are Americans willing to fight and to suffer casualties for an idea as abstract as maintaining American dominance in the Western Pacific? We thought that the shale revolution was going to bring kumbaya. Our answered prayers were much more than we had bargained for. The United States doesn't ignore all human rights abuses by all rich nations. It just ignores the human rights abuses by all rich nations that are its allies. Militarily and strategically, the U.S. and Saudi Arabia are as close as they've ever been, but politically, they've been on the opposite side of almost every major issue in the last five years. Either put up or shut up. If anybody has any proof of a single Saudi, help us in getting to these people who presumably are giving support to these groups. The bulk of the security challenges come from the Taliban and their supporters in Pakistan. The entire leadership of the Taliban is in Pakistan. So it goes to show where the heart of terror is. I could never tell if there was a direct linkage, but I had to assume that they were getting support from somewhere. It's what keeps me awake at night because we do know that terrorist organizations want to get their hands on nuclear weapons. You would hold out hope that we could have a world completely free of nuclear weapons, but the reality is our nuclear weapons are deterrents against the use of nuclear weapons, and that's just harsh reality. The majority of people in these countries are no longer poor, and it's a very different place than it was back 30 or 40 years ago. Latin American economies are finding that they have to reform, they have to create markets for exports, they have to create institutions. Taking the second strongest European country out of the European Union, the United Kingdom, that's a recipe for instability in Europe itself. People are not doing so well in many parts of Europe. And they're starting to question, does European integration help me anymore? Is it protecting me against cheap Chinese imports? Is it keeping unemployment levels low? No, in many cases, on both those answers. If you went out right now and you asked the average American, was NAFTA a success? They'd say, oh, no. But NAFTA was a huge success. It created many, many jobs. It created much, much growth. The defenders of trade talk about how the pie has increased. The losers from trade are saying, stop. We don't want to hear about your pie. We want to hear about our slice.